has brought us into his banquet in hall, and his banner over us is love. Love is kind. His banner over us is love. His banner over us is love. I just want to welcome you to another edition of our series on education. Many educational programs include a period of rest in the form of a regular break, a stretch break, a lunch break, or some other appellation. Even formal organizations factor in a period of rest in the elaboration of their work schedules. The importance of rest can be traced back to the Genesis account of creation where God, after working for six days, subjected himself to rest even though he was not tired and offered the Sabbath as a special gift to his creatures. Unfortunately, over time, humans have lost sight of the value of this day and uh, the significance of this day in our Christian experience. Today we want to rediscover the benefits of the Sabbath. We also want to understand the role the Sabbath plays in education and we will do this through the study of our lesson, Sabbath experiencing and living the character of God. My name is Samuel Ngoikubanfo, Theodore Dixon, and Constance Wosu are today's contributors. We will begin with a word of prayer as we invite Theodore to pray for us. Shall we pray? Dear Lord in heaven, we thank you because your God and there is none else, the Lord of the Sabbath. We have come to study your word and we ask that you may please grant us the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Illumine our hearts and teach us from your word that we will understand, interpret appropriately, and also educate our viewers that at the end of this discussion, the real meaning and significance of the Sabbath and the lessons we need to learn will be unfolded to your glory and for our benefits. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Welcome again, dear viewers, and thank you so much for your support in this program. Thank you for the encouragement. Thank you for the messages that keep on streaming in uh, day in, day out. In the spirit of the Sabbath, we do pray that the Lord will help us to experience um, his special rest in him and that our lives will be made even much more better and Amen. brighter. Amen. Mm -hmm. um, on um, uh, just, I think it's an immediate past edition of this program, we did talk about um, work in the context of education and we said work was one of those institutions uh, in the Garden of Eden. Mm -hmm. uh, we talked about marriage in passing but here we're talking about another institution and that's the Sabbath. One of those things we took over from uh, the Garden of Eden even after sin. One of those blessings that uh, God gave us but we're talking about experiencing and living the character of God. Um, would like to begin straight away by um, reflecting on the very first Sabbath, uh, that first experience of the Sabbath in the Garden of Eden, which we find in Genesis chapter 2, verses 1 to 3. Um, and as we read this text, dear viewers, uh, we just want to encourage you to picture what possibly uh, happened in the Garden of Eden that day. Constance will be reading that passage for us. Genesis chapter 2, verses 1 to 3. Genesis chapter 2, verses 1 to 3, reading again from the New American Standard Bible. 
Thus the heavens and the earth were completed, and all their hosts. And by the seventh day God completed his work which he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had done. Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because in it he rested from all his work which God had created and made. Amen. 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 Uh, like I said earlier, this verse takes us back to the very first Sabbath, and uh, I just want us to put on our, our imagination caps uh, <laughs> as we relive this experience. Let, let me adjust my lenses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as we relive this experience with Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, experiencing this very first Sabbath uh, with just this fresh creation from the hands of God. Uh, what educational opportunities did the Sabbath offer our first parents then and even now? Yes, I'm just thinking. You know, God finished, created all the other things, and then he created humanity, Adam. Mm -hmm. And then he created Eve. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking, Adam now see, you know, saw Eve. And Eve saw Adam, and they are wondering, where did we come from? <laughs> you know, <laughs> who are up? you? <laughs> who are you? What is going on? And then they turn around and they see all the animals, mm -hmm. and they see Eve, and they see um, the plants, they see beautiful flowers, mm -hmm. different colors. I can't imagine it. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine it. I think it was a period of exploration, mm. observation nature walk, mm -hmm. field trip, mm -hmm. anything you can think of because you know, we don't do all these things in schools now, you know, sometimes because of maybe lack of security, mm -hmm. funding and everything. But if you have lived in rural areas, I used to live in Canada, beautiful, you know, and uh, sometimes on Sabbath, you just take off, go to some lake, even my school area, I'll, I'll leave the vehicle in the garage and forget that I had a vehicle and I'm walking. So, so this walking didn't start today. I'm walking and I'll choose not to go by the main road. I'll go through the path and I'll be experiencing and enjoying these lakes and whatever is in them, mm -hmm. the plants around. So I w I'm just thinking that first Sabbath, you know, would have been a very good and a day for them to wonder what it was that, and all the things that God had made, they would be, they would even be tasting some of the fruit, you mm -hmm. know, and the nuts and the grains. They'll be doing some thinking, you know, and we're talking about some of the things that are done in the classroom, mm -hmm. doing some thinking, uh, whether it's um, creative thinking or imaginative thinking or whatever, they'll be doing all those. They'll be engaging in some inquiry lessons of, how did this happen? Who brought it about? You know, maybe picking up the flowers and, you know, looking at all. So it, for me, uh, they'll be examining everything carefully. You know, as you're walking very fast every day, they say, stop and smell the roses. I'm sure they had enough opportunity to smell all the beautiful uh, flowers, flowers in their different kinds. And wow, I can imagine what this garden is. The perfume, nobody can even describe that. <laughs> Yeah, you know, uh, mm. uh, away from that, it was the first time with a friend who has become a wife or husband. Yeah. So learning to love, oh. even how to talk. Mm. Yeah, they, they had not caught it. You know, they, they didn't caught, you know. <laughs> so learning relationship. Uh -huh. So the, the Sabbath opportunity, especially when we look at the, the sequence, I, I was just imagining you know, God created on the sixth day. Mm -hmm. Remember that, um, um, first of all, God made the land animals, mm -hmm. okay? And then every other thing finished, God made Adam, and you know, he started working. Mm -hmm. It was in the course of his work that God saw that he was alone, mm -hmm. and then God put him to sleep. Did God see that he was alone? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. He didn't know he was alone. No, he wasn't. He wasn't the one that... God, God, did, no, God didn't know that Adam was. He said he saw that he was alone. You mean God saw? Uh -huh. Well... That's the way you put it. Well, um, God seeing that he was alone was that he needed a companion. It's not because God, God, God was ignorant. Know. God wasn't ignorant. In fact, I can say that 
perhaps God made man first to heighten the need yeah. for a woman, mm -hmm. you so know, to heighten the need for a woman <laughs> so that we can always, you know, have the need for a woman, like otherwise maybe we wouldn't have valued the woman, you know. So Adam was put to sleep. God made Eve. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many hours he slept, still within 24 hours, okay, and then he woke up and then saw this woman. In my mind, I was, I was just thinking that night was already coming. The day, the, the, the sixth day had ended. The mm. Sabbath was our beginning. So that first encounter was just the Sabbath. And it was a time of work has ended. It's time to enjoy. Enjoy your new wife. Enjoy a new environment. Enjoy this God. Get involved. Get to talk. Of course, we know they became adults just by the first, you know, their first day. So everything was just new. Mm -hmm. And it was a time, no dull moment. Mm -hmm. For me, there was no dull moment at all. Imagining everything that Constance has mentioned. Holding you know, each other's hands. You know, you know, running around what, the garden. What it, what it means, you know, the body chemistry, what it means. Also, oh, if I touch you, this is how you respond. How did you feel when I touched you? You know, all, all those kind of experiences. Mm -hmm. you, you can just imagine what it was all about and, and then God was present you know and just then trying to get to know god how did you do this what what was in your mind it just made us wow and i think um this is exactly what we we god was not doing that by chance oh. he created the sabbath so that you know that opportunity can be established and it wasn't just for me i think it wasn't a one for all thing it's mm -hmm. just something that should continue, should continue. yeah so going by the description that, that, that you have given me, one has the impression today that uh, uh, the experience of the Sabbath is so far removed very, from, very very from far what removed, the Eden yeah. yeah. experience uh, was. And maybe yeah. we will discover how to go back to that uh, original experience. Uh, we'll take another Bible passage. This time we'll be reading from Exodus chapter 16, verses 14 to 29. <coughs> and Theodore will be reading for us. Exodus chapter 16, verses 14 to 29, reading from the New King James Version. And when the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a small round substance, as fine as frost on the ground. So when the children of Israel saw it, they said to one another, What is it? for they did not know what it was. And Moses said to them, This is the bread which the Lord has given you to eat. This is the thing which the Lord has commanded. Let every man gather it according to each one's need, one omer for each person, according to the number of persons. Let every man take for those who are in his tent. Then the children of Israel did so and gathered, some more, some less. So when they measured it by omers, he who gathered much has nothing left over, and he who gathered little had no lack. Wow. Mm. Every man had gathered according to each one's need. And Moses said, Let no one leave any of it till morning. Notwithstanding, they did not heed Moses, but some of them left part of it until morning, and it breed worms and stank. And Moses was angry with them, so they gathered it every morning, every man according to his need, and when the sun became hot, it melted. And so it was on the sixth day that they gathered twice as much bread, two omers for each one. And all the rulers of the congregation came and told Moses. Then he said to them, This is what the Lord has said. Tomorrow is the Sabbath rest, a holy Sabbath to the Lord. Bake what you will bake today, and boil what you will boil, and lay up for yourselves all that remains to be kept until morning. So they laid it up till morning as Moses commanded, and it did not stink, 
nor were there any worms in it. Then Moses said, Eat that today, for today is the Sabbath of the Lord. Today you will not find it in the field. Six days you shall gather it, but on the seventh day, the Sabbath, there will be none. Now it happened that some of the people went out on the seventh day to gather, but they found none. And the Lord said to Moses, How long do you refuse to keep my commandments and my laws? See, for the Lord has given you the Sabbath, therefore he gives you on the sixth day bread for two days. Let every man remain in his place. Let no man go out of his place on the seventh day. Amen. 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 Wow, interesting story there. Um, I don't know if you paid attention to the fact that God um, asks people to pick the manna according to their need. Oh, yeah. And the Bible says there was enough for everybody. So probably today uh, we're having problems with food. World distribution of food is very uneven. Maybe because some people are having much more than they, than yeah, they really well, that's need. It, that's it. But we'll take a break here. And uh, when we come back, we will um, discuss more on this text. Uh, what does this text have in store for us? We'll be right back. Welcome back, dear viewers. You're still on Bible Banquet, and we are talking about the Sabbath, experiencing and living the character of God. We did read a text in the Old Testament where God miraculously provided manna to the children of Israel. Um, but this text is filled with uh, a number of lessons which we want to look at right now. Um, how did, did God use the Sabbath as a means of teaching the Israelites about him. You know, I have a book that talks about um, education, you know, in the University of Hard Knock. Mm. And then that University of Hard Knock was the wilderness experience. Israel spent 40 years and um, God provided food for them, you know, like manna. And that was teaching them his benevolence. Mm -hmm. Even though they were going through a punishment, okay, but God used that occasion to reveal his benevolence. Mm -hmm. Apart from that, in the course of providing the food, moving from known to the unknown, God also used that opportunity to teach them about himself as the creator, okay? and now uh, the Lord of the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. um, if we go back to the context of that of Exodus chapter 16 where we read, you see that Exodus 16 presents to us a people who have been in slavery from the call of Abraham. We were talking about 400 and um, over 430 years. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they had lost the idea of the Sabbath as we find in Genesis chapter 2, 1 to 3, mm -hmm. you know, having lived in Egypt where there is you know, polytheism. So God didn't start out by giving them the Ten Commandments. They have not arrived at Sinai. Okay, the commandment has not been given. But God gave food. And now in giving them the food, he gave, he prescribed manners by which the food should be gathered once every day. Mm -hmm. And then on the sixth day, you gather twice. Why? Because he taught them the lesson of preparation for the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. So it is from there we get the idea of Sabbath preparation. And now it talks about the Sabbath. You won't find it on the Sabbath because it is a day of rest, a day of holy convocation, a day to meet with the Lord. So God reveals his holiness. God puts, you know, by the reason of the manner, he established the boundaries of the Sabbath in the sense that when you go to the field, you won't find it. But if you go any other day, it will be there. Mm -hmm. So what has he taught them? Cessation from work, holiness, rest sanctification so god reveals himself you know in different ways and um, i i think that it is just a simple way of educating people so the the wilderness wandering constituted a university where israel god 
school to people and thought revealed himself in a very simplistic manner that I think every educator should learn should from. Learn. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Notilda mentioned the fact that they were under punishment. The I think it's Matthew 5.45 that says that God allows his son and the, his son to shine on both the righteous the, the, and, and on the, the, on the, on the, the wicked. Yeah. Same thing as when the rain you know, mm -hmm. uh, allows his rain to fall for both groups of people. God didn't say, well, this manna is only those who mm -hmm. listened mm -hmm. that I'll give it to. Mm -hmm. He just allowed everybody. God also did something. Uh, uh, revealed his sense of community there. You know, in, if, if we actually obeyed God's instruction, there will be, people will not be suffering today. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. In Deuteronomy, he talks about as long as the world lasts, there will be the poor, there will mm -hmm. be the rich. He also talks about the fact that he has endowed the rich people so that they can take care of the, the poor. poor. Mm -hmm. He showed these lessons of, of his intention in this manner uh, situation. I, I, even what you mentioned before, you know, equality. I, those who got, did you see that uh, Sedo said, those who got SS, when it was measured, it was, oh, it leveled up. Those who okay. got less, it was mm -hmm. leveled up. Okay, so that's where, mm -hmm. what I wanted to say, yeah, he you, showed, you, you got showed it. this community, sense mm -hmm. of community, helping one another not being greedy. Social justice. Yes, social justice. Mm -hmm. yeah. He even showed that it is not your ability that will give you more or less. Mm -hmm. It is not the fact that you're able to run to get the food. Because even after, even if you were greedy and run to get it before others got it, when you measured it, it was the same, same thing. <laughs> you know, there was, I'm sorry, yeah. I don't know why you are laughing. <laughs> but that's you know, the point. You know. So, so, so you, you think you are wise, you but know, what, what no, God says will happen. If you are a family of five, and this is this your family of 10. As long as you obey that instruction of an Omar for one day, it doesn't mean uh, you've gone to the market when you ask them to measure rice but what are, and uh, how they heap. But I'm just wondering, what about those who have big tummy and those who can eat it SS? It doesn't really matter. <laughs> <laughs> he, he had a way of making sure that <laughs> everybody <laughs> had, had them. Okay. <laughs> and he, he, he shows that. Um, he is the one who sustains us yeah. mm -hmm. and provides for us. There's yeah. nothing we can do better than what he has done for us. Very correct. And so um, God is good. He's merciful. And just that simple lesson, much, much um, came out of it. And if we reflect on that, especially about the Sabbath, as the other has said, I don't want to belabor that, you notice that. He's a God who gives you instruction. Mm -hmm. yeah. And if yeah. you follow his instruction, you will not go wrong. So obedience was emphasized. He yeah. wants to make sure you obeyed him. Mm -hmm. And that obedience, he still requires us today to obey him. Mm. And we need. Wow, a lot of things. Uh, God showing himself through the Sabbath, uh, as we've seen in this manner experience as the creator, as being the benevolent God, as being the Lord of the Sabbath, God exhibiting his holiness and God teaching us uh, obedience, obedience to him. Uh, but what about the Sabbath itself? Because here we've talked about um, uh, what, how God used the Sabbath to teach the Israelites about him. Mm -hmm. But uh, what truths did God teach the Israelites about the Sabbath itself, about this day of worship through this experience? God is the creator mm -hmm. that they may know that he is the creator. So from there, Israel should know that they should work, and then on the day that they should rest, they enter into that rest. Mm -hmm. So, and God reveals Himself. So He He shows them the idea of what Constance has mentioned, fellowship. Mm -hmm. It was not a day of. It was not a holiday. The Sabbath is not. It's a holy day, but not. You know, it's a day of rest, but not a holiday. It's a day of rest. It's also a day of fellowship. So mm -hmm. he taught them to enter into fellowship. They should also exalt him as a creator because as a rest, um, like we have talked about the Garden of Eden experience. Reflection. Reflection. They do reflection. They talk about what God has done and then the stories of God's leadership and providence. They praise him. They praise him. In fact, 
the, 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 the reality of the fact that manna will not fall on the Sabbath will constitute a lot of discussion. Mm -hmm. They will talk about it and then they understand more about God. More about God. And they also learn that Sabbath is for doing good, mm -hmm. not to give them food, food to yeah. eat. Um, he shows them that if we don't work on the Sabbath, God can still provide for well, our needs. Yeah. That is very important. And obedience to the Sabbath commandments does not lead us to lack. Mm -hmm. Doesn't lead us to lack. Rather, it leads to abundance because so God provides enough. for you. Mm -hmm. And um, Sabbath is for all time. This is these are your days. But you see this one. Don't it's mine. It's mine. Mm -hmm. Just it, honor it. it. Now going to work will not kill you. <laughs> <laughs> honor what my day and see what I can do for you. The miracles I can perform. Mana, the mana is uh, not uh, falling on Sabbath. Isn't it a miracle? It was yeah, a miracle yeah, because why would it fall on other days and not on the Sabbath? Something like you said, they had to think about. And God is particular about his rules, about his, law, his, his laws. What he tells you to do, do it. What he says, don't do. Just leave it there. Even if you don't understand it, don't worry about don't it. Don't do it. Mm. Now, how can the Sabbath become a positive learning experience? especially for young people. Sometimes uh, we meet young people, yes, they have a head knowledge about the Sabbath. They even agree that the Sabbath is a day of worship. But when it comes to living and experiencing, remember our, our lesson talks about living and experiencing the character of God. When it comes to having this experience, they feel, well, this is simply routine. Um, young people today will say it's boring <laughs> most of the time. So um, how do we help um, people, not just the young people anyway, but I'm saying they are more affected sometimes, but how can the Sabbath become a positive learning experience for us? You know, I think um, it is by the way we relate to the young people and what's done about the Sabbath itself. Sometimes they pick up this um, attitudes from us parents. Mm. We go, we, we, we grumble, we complain. It, it becomes uh, laborious for us. Mm. So, uh, but we need to change that. Um, even the way we conduct worship, we can look at it again. As an adult, it doesn't bother me. Mm. I can sit there for hours. But to confine young people in one place the whole day, talking to <coughs> them, you know, talking to them and talking, not giving them the opportunity to express, them to express yeah. themselves, to talk. How about if we um, change the way we do church? Mm -hmm. I might be stepping on some toes. <laughs> I might be causing trouble. I'm, li I'm, listen <laughs> I'm listening to you. <laughs> I, I want to understand what and, you're and what you're how about. And how about if we made, made it uh, days of exploration mm. for the young people, nature. Mm -hmm. You know, on this campus, Babcock University, there was a time this place was, you know, they called it bush. Mm. And I remember that sometimes I took the female students to around, you know, and inside those areas. Mm -hmm. And we pick fl flowers and we come back to the hostel and we talk about the them long. and we, we picked stones. I remember we used to have one misdemeanor on this campus. Even orange peels was a learning um, activity, you know, a learning, um, what do you call it? Yeah. Didactic, tool. Didactic tool. You know, what if we just changed and not confine them the whole day, but give them the opportunity? Of course, there are many. Mm -hmm. I see it would take a lot of uh, thinking to do that, but s let them sit for a while, but let them go out and do something and come back mm -hmm. and, 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 uh, and share what, what, what to do. Why, what about instead of preaching to them all the time, engage them, throw out a topic for them, engage them in some discussion, let mm -hmm. them be in groups and talk about this aspect of God or talk about what Sabbath is all about, talk about, you know, some about God, about, God, mm -hmm. about the world we live in, mm -hmm. about how creation comes. Just throw out some things to them and let them you know, we have, let them have leaders who go. We give them 30 minutes, we give them one hour depending, and then when they finish, let them come back, let them um, discuss it. What about ha asking them during, before they leave church this Sabbath, say, for your assignment next Sabbath, I want you to check on maybe this, uh, how, how, how long the world has lasted. You know, mm -hmm. some 
engaging activity, activities. and tell them, do your research, do a video on it, you are going to come and present it on Sabbath. Something, you know, the young people, want, they have energy. They mm -hmm. want to do something. But when we put them in church and they are there from morning till the evening, at that point, even, you know, you, they get bored, they are tired, they want to get up. They have a mm -hmm. lot of energy in them. They want to be running around. And the one, even these little ones that we put and force them to sit down when they are not supposed to be sitting. I think we need to, to um, think, rethink to about rethink. Uh, how we do worship so that these students, they will want to come back to church, mm. do a surprise Sabbath. And the, the people that came late say, ah, we are late today. We better go early next week because we don't know what what's they are, what was going to do. And then... Um, what if we change our routine so that it's not the same thing we do every Sabbath? They come today, instead of uh, um, starting with prayer, they start with something else, you know, and they are like, I don't know, these, these leaders, they're always coming up uh, with every, even assigning them to plan and execute, you know? Um, so many ideas. So many, many ideas, <laughs> something that we can yeah. do. You know, they are energetic, they have energy, they are the world of technology, they think when we don't think they are seeing, they, are, they, 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 they can imagine things. What if we just form a committee and say, you do this and let mm. us see what you do in another. I think church can become something where they want to go to all the time. Mm. If it is not just about sitting down and listening to adults talking at you, not even to eat to you. Talking with yeah, you. Yeah, talking with you. Mm. I, I think we need to give them more opportunity to express to themselves more, to be involved and to experience nature, experience nature, go out, find some things, come in and discuss. Yeah, I think um, these ideas are very fantastic, <laughs> very, very fantastic. But, but then how to manage yeah, that? Yeah, I, the, the, the fundamental thing for me is that we all need to understand that worship is not about us. Mm. Worship is about God. So the central focus is not me and how I feel, it's about God. You know, worship has been well defined as um, an encounter with God. But it doesn't so mean that they are not going to worship. Yes, but yes, I'm it, saying that there has to be a segment of activity. Oh yeah, you know, where you, they can you know, you know, when when activity becomes the the center, the center. of 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 worship, we can get distracted. You know, from the people must be led. You know, God said you must not walk. Stop, because even in the discussion we are having. God also instill discipline, self-control, okay, so that we can keep the boundaries of the Sabbath. So what we do within, there, is, there should be a time of sharing the word of God, but that should not take the whole day. Everything know? I have said now not to be done in one day. I'm just yeah. giving several and, some and, different and, and understand, ideas understand. of so some things that can happen yeah, once I'm, in I'm a while. I'm just saying so that somebody who is listening will mm -hmm. not say, oh, you know, the, 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 I, I just listened to this program and then they said, we should we get should out and then go and outdoor. And, you and know. it does not even mean in the morning. They yeah. can still come back from thank church. You, thank you. They, they do AY. Yeah, of you course. Know. So but all of know, those have to be From the morning, done. they sit AY, all through. The they come, yes, yeah. they still come back to AY. They are still sitting. But I'm just saying, if we vary what Ativ we our do, activities, our activities, yeah, activities, maybe it will help them to... But the uh, focus. To, but the focus, focus is still worship. God, Even God. Their, whatever it is they are finding in nature is still to come back and talk about that's God. God. You know, God. That's, that's what I mean. That's fine. We'll take a break here. And uh, when we come back, we will discover more about how to keep the Sabbath. Um, what are those priorities um, that God wants to teach us on the Sabbath? But let's hold on to that question. And uh, we will discover the answer right after the break. Sorrows and turned it into joy. 
You took my pain and gave me relief Where could I have been without you? My song is a song of victory If you had not come to my rescue To deliver me from the hands of destruction Ibu Ji Chitima Ibu Ji Chitima You do me walu 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 you bless me Yafu 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 Ashe ho I want to go Ibu Ji viewers we are talking about the sabbath experience in living the character of god and we have seen that there are many things we can do on the sabbath there are many ways to make the most of the sabbath but definitely uh, god does not expect us to do just everything on the sabbath because the sabbath is a special day and he has set some priorities um, that must be respected on this day and that's what we're about to discover in the next set of bible readings Isaiah chapter 58 verses 13 and 14 I will be reading that text while Theodore would read Matthew 12 verses 1 to 13 and Constance would read Luke 13 verses 10 to 17 Isaiah 58 verses 13 <coughs> and 14 if you turn away your foot from the Sabbath, from doing your pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy day of the Lord, honorable, and shall honor him, not doing your own ways, nor finding your own pleasure, nor speaking your own words, then you shall delight yourself in the Lord, and I will cause you to ride on the high hills of the earth and feed you with the heritage of Jacob your father 
the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Matthew chapter 12, verses 1 to 13. At that time, Jesus went through the grain fields on the Sabbath, and his disciples were hungry and began to pluck heads of grain and to eat. And when the Pharisees saw it, they said to him, Look, your disciples are doing what is not lawful to do on the Sabbath. But he said to them, Have you not read what David did when he was hungry, he and those who were with him, how he entered the house of God and ate the showbread which was not lawful for him to eat, nor for those who were with him, but only for the priests? Or have you not read in the law that on the Sabbath the priests in the temple profane the Sabbath and are blameless? Yet I say to you that in this place there is one greater than the temple. But if you had known what this means, I desire mercy and not sacrifice, you would not have condemned the guiltless, for the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. Now, when he had departed from there, he went into their synagogue, and behold, there was a man who had a withered hand, and they asked him, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath, that they might accuse him? Then he said to them, What man is there among you who has one sheep, and if it falls into a pit on the Sabbath, will not lay hold of it and lift it out? Of how much more value then is the man than a sheep? Therefore it is lawful to do good on the Sabbath. Then he said to the man, Stretch out your hand. And he stretched it out, and it was restored as whole as the other. Amen. 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 I'm reading Luke chapter 13, verses 10 to 17. Luke 13, 10 to 17. And he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And behold, there was a woman who for 18 years had had a sickness caused by a spirit. And she was bent double and could not straighten up at all. And when Jesus saw her, he called her over and said to her, Woman, you are freed from your sickness. And he laid his hands upon her, and immediately she was made erect again and began glorifying God. 14. And the synagogue official, indignant because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath, began saying to the multitude in response, There are six days in which work should be done. Therefore come during them and get healed, and not on the Sabbath day. But the Lord answered him and said, You hypocrites! Does not each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or his donkey from the stall and lead him away to water him? And this woman, a daughter of Abraham as she is, whom Satan has bound for eighteen long years, should she not have been released from this bond on the Sabbath day? And as he said this, all his opponents were being humiliated, and the entire multitude was rejoicing over all the glorious things being done by him. Amen. Amen. Um, now these texts tell us some of those things that should be done and those that shouldn't be done on the Sabbath. Um, what kind of priorities does the Sabbath help us establish? Doing good, mm -hmm. helping people, mm -hmm. alleviating suffering, yeah. making, maintaining justice, help, you know. Um, Breaking away from no things that do not glorify God. Mm -hmm. So uh, we read um, in one of the texts, I think that was in Isaiah chapter 58, where the Bible talks about turning one's foot away from the Sabbath, and it talks also about making the Sabbath a delight. How are we to understand uh, this, uh, uh, this concept? How do I turn my foot away from the Sabbath? You know, in the earlier, but before we went on break, we were talking about how to make the Sabbath um, less not boring mm -hmm. for the young people, and th that's why doing some of those activities we tend to shy away from them because if we don't plan them well, it will become a a play time for the mm -hmm. people. And when you talk about turning away 
your food. God says this, this day is mine. Don't even go there. Leave it for me. So when I engage in my personal pleasures, mm. things that um, I love to do, not necessarily doing things, God's own things, I, would, um, I am not turning away my foot. So I, I see it as you're going to that place and you say, don't go there. That is my way. Keep your foot away, away. from it. <laughs> don't even bother. And, and, and there are so many ways that we put our foot in the, into the Sabbath of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Even today, people doing you know, things that they want to do. And when you talk to them, they say, we are not supposed to judge me. It's not about do or don't do. Um, we have a, a, a group of students on our campus who left their country and came here two years ago because in their country, they, 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 were, they were all university students, but they had to pull out of the university because it was difficult for them. Classes are held on Sabbath, exams are held on Sabbath. They said, no, we can't do that. So they came out here in search of education opportunity where they can worship God six really? days freely and not worry about that. I, I sympathize with them because I, I, I understand what they go through. When I refused to write exams on Sabbath, people thought that was the end of my life for me. So all those things that give you pleasure, rather than focus your attention to God, God says we shouldn't do them on the Sabbath. We should just trust him and give devote the whole time to him, and he will take care of our needs. Mm -hmm. Um, we also read a number of stories. Um, what was Jesus trying to teach through those stories? He, he stressed on, on doing good, not just viewing the Sabbath as an endless list of do's and don'ts, but he stressed so much on um, doing good. Uh, what was Jesus trying to teach us through these stories? Yeah, you know, um, over the years, especially when you go back to the intertestamental period, okay, a lot of burdens were put on the Sabbath because um, of traditions mm -hmm. and reinterpretations of the text. So by the time Jesus came to the scene in the New Testament, the Jews had put a lot of burdens, a lot of the, the, the real meaning of the Sabbath and its significance seemed to have been lost. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it was misplaced priority. Somebody cannot come on the Sabbath to get healing. You know, there is six days for you to get healing. Don't come on the Sabbath to get it. And Jesus said, but if your donkey falls into the pit, you get it out. So human value, you know, and, um, mm -hmm. you know, mercy was brought down. Even animals we are placed, welfare, the wealth of animals we are placed Higher. high above that of human beings. So Jesus came to remove those burdens. You know, mm -hmm. while affirming the law of God, he sought to challenge their their misinterpretation of the, of, the, of the law, and particularly the Sabbath, so that he can teach the real meaning mm -hmm. of the Sabbath. And, um, and Mark chapter 2 captures that very well. The Sabbath is made for man as mm -hmm. a delight, as a blessing. Remember Genesis chapter 2, verses 1 to 3. The Sabbath was blessed. It was sanctified. And uh, for man to enter into fellowship, for man to be blessed, and for man to refresh. So, it is not a time for people to bear their burden. Mm -hmm. It's a time for release. And Jesus came to teach that. To teach that. Okay, we'll take another set of Bible passages. This time we'll be reading from Acts chapter 13, verses 14 and verses 42 to 45. Constance would read that uh, passage for us. Why Theodore would read Acts 16, verse 13, and uh, verse 13, verses 13 and 14, and Acts 18, verse 4. Acts 13, 14. But going on from Pega, they arrived at Pisidian, Antioch. And on the Sabbath day, they went into the synagogue and sat down, 42 to 45. And as Paul and Barnabas were going out, the people kept begging that these things might be spoken to them the next Sabbath. Now when the meeting of the synagogue had broken up, many of the Jews and of the God-fearing proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas, who, speaking to them, were urging them to continue in the grace of God. And the next Sabbath, nearly the whole city assembled to hear the word of God. Amen. 
But when the Jews saw the crowds, they were filled with jealousy and began contradicting the things spoken by Paul and were blaspheming. Mm. Mm. Too bad. Acts chapter 16, verses 13 and 14. And on the Sabbath day, we went out of the city to the riverside where prayer was customarily made. And we sat down and spoke to the women who met there. Now a certain woman named Lydia heard us. She was a seller of purple from the city of Theatira, who worshipped God. The Lord opened her heart to heed the things spoken by Paul. As chapter 18, verse 4. And he reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath and persuaded both Jews and Greeks. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Now, in all of these verses, we see a sense of community. We see a sense of fellowship. People coming together on the Sabbath. Uh, it seems to say, yes, the Sabbath is a day of rest, is a day of relationship with our Creator, but it's a day of fellowship too. Um, so how does the Sabbath help build and consolidate community? The Sabbath, uh, let me say this, you know, that, you know, many people struggle with them. Um, oh, the Sabbath ended at the cross. Oh, the Sabbath is not for contemporary Christians. You know, it's important to note that not, none of the New Testament texts, you know, we are written until after about 30 years after Christ ascended to heaven. Mm. And so if the Sabbath had ended on the cross, what were they doing? The apostles, you know, and Paul himself. So I just want us to know that, you know, the Bible contains, in fact, one in every eight, in every eight of the chapters of the New Testament, one has something to say about the Sabbath. Mm. And here we see that the Sabbath provided an opportunity for the apostles to share with the people, both Jews and Greeks, of their personal experiences, of the history of God's leadership in their lives. Mm -hmm. And that became an opportunity for them to invite them to experience God in a different way. Mm -hmm. So the Sabbath was, you know, the Sabbath fellowship was an opportunity for education, to teach the people, to call them into, you know, fellowship, to understand the truth and to study the Word of God. And I think that is what we should do today. Mm. So, um, Constance, what, what key elements enhance fellowship on the Sabbath? I know you mentioned some of them, especially when you were talking about the young people, but, uh, um, but let's come back. Viewing from this text, what are those key elements that, that enhance fellowship, you that know? make us want mm -hmm. to go back to church, to make us want to spend time with, with one another on the Sabbath? Well, one of the things that gives me rest is the study of the Word of God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we need to encourage, in as much as I'm saying, let's vary some of the things that we do. These things I'm talking about, sh their focus is not um, people activity, but it's still activities that would direct the student's attention to, to God. God. So Bible study is key. Preaching the Word of God is key. Mm -hmm. People need to hear the Word of God. We need to get together. We need to pray together. We need to... Um, Apparently we have testimonies too. Yes, we yeah, have personal testimonies, mm -hmm. personal experience. experience. We need to share, you know, how our week has been, what has happened to us. In my Sabbath school class, if I miss that, the women will not let me do anything. They must tell me what, you know, what happened <laughs> to them during the week. It's very, very important. And we need to, whatever we are needing, need to we need to show how God has led us from the beginning the history, of the week very important. to the end of the week. And even in the Bible, there was breaking of bread. Mm -hmm. Whenever it is possible, we shouldn't miss that. Whether we do it as a church or we take some people home or something that we need to do that, those are elements that can bring. And let us uh, try to make sure that we care for one another through genuine caring, not just, hello, happy Sabbath. You mm -hmm. know, when people know you care for them, they will come back. Mm -hmm. The next Sabbath they will come back. Um, let's make friends with people and let's try to encourage one another to grow. It's important. So when we have all these elements in, 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 a, in our fellowship, it will help people to come. And when people see us, they will want to come to see what is it about us. And the community will start growing, will continue mm -hmm. to grow. It, it's also a faith builder, you know, when we all 
come together that way. I, I saw an element there, you know, the telling of history. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, today many of the young people don't know the history of God's leadership. Mm -hmm. They told them the story from Abraham to David and from David, you know, to the time well, that's part of, of education. Yeah, education. part of education. So mm -hmm. I think our church should also provide, our worship experiences should provide an opportunity for education, retelling the story. Of and course, they were you know, not tired of telling that story. No, they were not tired they because were because in telling that story, Christ is revealed. Yes. In fact, the theology of Israel, uh, the theology of the Old Testament, is founded in their history, mm -hmm. as yes. they told the story of God's intervention. Mm -hmm. So I think it is important that we include that Even in the our history worship. of the church. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, the, we we need to tell that, but many of the people don't, don't know. know. They don't know. Wow. And so, dear viewers, the Sabbath is a beautiful day, a day of fellowship. It's a day for us to learn. It's a day for us to interact with others. It's a day for us to build our relationship with God. That's very important. A day for us to look more like God. As we're talking about living and experiencing the character of God. And our prayer is that uh, beyond the discussions on the Sabbath today, that... Uh, this Sabbath and many more to come uh, will be part of our experience, that we would learn to see God on, on the Sabbath. We will learn to experience him. We will learn more about this history we are talking about, a history of salvation, and that day after day, Sabbath after Sabbath, we will get ever more ready to meet him on that great Sabbath that we will spend in the new heaven and in the new earth. Mm -hmm. And so it's with this hope, with these words of assurance that uh, we put an end to today's um, edition. Looking forward to meeting you on another edition of this program. We will ask Constance to leave us with a word of prayer. Dear Father in heaven, we thank you for enabling us to discuss this lesson today. Thank you for our listeners and our viewers. Thank you for the word that has gone out there, and we pray that it will yield fruit in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, help us to live your s the Sabbath day, not just to talk about it, not make it a set of don'ts and do's, but an experience that each one of us should look forward to every Sabbath. Thank you, Lord, for all our crew members and helping us in all that we have done. And as we um, wait for another Sabbath, Lord, we pray that your blessings will continue to be with us. And if there are people out there who have not experienced the Sabbath, we pray that your Holy Spirit will teach them so that the blessings that come with it will become theirs also. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.